Hi, hello, welcome back to Last Looks. My name is Carly and uh, happy Halloween. Today, on all days, uh, I'm going to be uh, transferring to you guys some of my greatest wisdom and that is how to baseline, base level, look like a vampire. Um, I have not done one like all encompassing tutorial on vampire makeup just yet, but this is my universal, I want to build a vampire character makeup. This year for one of the parties that I went to, I was a um, like sort of 60s sleepover vampire, stuff like that. Um, this is what I will do like anytime I dress up as any sort of vampire. This, These are my steps I take to start to look sort of um, inhuman. And when I wear them without all of the blood and the gore, wear this look, uh, I tend to get a lot of compliments. People think I look very beautiful. I feel like I look very beautiful. Inspired by all different sorts of vampires, um, a lot of uh, Queen of the Damned, that sort of makeup is what inspired it. Plus like um, a little Twilight and uh, maybe some sort of vintage vampire makeup as well. Without further ado, let's get started on it. Um, so, I didn't get my space or my area figured out. Here we are. So what we're gonna wanna start with is um, a clean slate of as perfect as I can get my skin to look because obviously I am blemishy and a mark of what vampires look like is um, decidedly not blemishy, at least in um, most vampire lore. So I'm gonna start with um, a stubborn acne treatment. I uh, This works as, pretty well as a primer and um, it keeps all the big boys at bay, generally. And it makes a nice separation between oh, my actual skin and my makeup. I have a canker sore right now. And I saw you. Isn't that horrible? I think it's from wearing fangs so much right now, which is hilarious. Um, because it's right, it's right where my fang hits <laughs> when I talk. Um, anyway, what's next? Oh, I'm going to put some con potted concealer on my blemishes. How are we? I totally slacked off this uh, season on videos, but I've told you guys before, I'm moving. Everything is unpredictable right now. Um, my life isn't very uh, solid. Oh, I also would heavily suggest, um, well, it just depends on what kind of vampire you're going for, but um, I would... I find that having no eyebrows really helps the sort of inhuman, feral kind of look. I know not everybody wants to commit to having no eyebrows. Uh, you could look up a tutorial on how to cover your eyebrows. I can't tell you. That's why I've got mine shaved off. I can't, I can't cover eyebrows for anything. Um, but I also think that you could get away with it with bushy, like drawing them even bushier, like, um, like old Dracula eyebrows, I think would work as well. Um, but this no eyebrow look, I think really helps me. All right. And now I'm going to take, um, my normal foundation, which might surprise you, but, um, I'm fairly pale anyway, but, um, my best suggestion for like how to do, like how to pale out your face a little bit for, um, vampire skin is I would do your normal foundation shade. And then for concealer, so like the high points of your face, I would do like three to four shades lighter than what you would normally do for concealer. So like if your skin looks like this, you might want to use a color like this for your concealer, but just wear your regular foundation. I'm doing a, my foundation is 410, so it's this color. And then I'm using this concealer, which is quite a bit lighter than my skin. And then I'm also going to use some white powder. You can use translucent powder or you can do what I'm doing and use like a powder that's paler than you. If you have really dark skin, a banana powder would probably work or some kind of brightening powder. 
something like that. And you can use quite a bit to try to build up your, you want a fairly full coverage. However, you want to avoid looking cakey because this is supposed to be our skin, right? So sometimes what helps is to um, warm up the product to help it seep into your skin. There we go. And then I'm not going to powder the whole face because again, I want to look healthy, um, sort of post feed rejuvenated. Uh, in the skin. I'll look unhealthy and sick on other parts of my face. All right, I'm going in with concealer um, and I'm gonna just do the high points of uh, the face. Under eye um, is not really necessary. I just like to do it um, because I, it's more for my nose because I feel like when I do light colors next to my nose, it makes it look teeny. But also I like to lift the eye for a vampire look. Forehead chin i just personally don't really like to put makeup on my nose kind of at all so i just avoid my nose but if you're one of those people put makeup on your nose i just feels like i feel like having no makeup on my nose really um it's like the first place you look so it makes me look less like i have less makeup on in in general jingle jangle so I'm going to blend this down and around and up next to my nose because I feel like that is pretty. White face powder. This white face powder is from Revolution Beauty, which just came to Walmart for the first time. Um, and it's Beetlejuice themed white powder. Isn't that nice? Um, it's a, such a useful product. I got a few of the Beetlejuice products just for fun. So I'm going to use that where I just put that concealer. All right, let's move on to contour. Now I have a specific contour color that I use. Um, generally, I would suggest using something cooler toned like gray, um, but I have found that my favorite color to contour with to be a vampire is a sort of, um, let's see if I can find it to show it, uh, a mauve purple liquid lipstick. So that is what I'm going to use. So you can find a color like this that um, it's similar in darkness to what I would normally use to contour. So this is like a normal contour color for me, sort of a warm brown. This is like a grayish purple. Like same sort of depth, so you would find that for your skin tone, except in like a grayish purple. And I find that these liquid cat suits um, work well as contour. They blend out nicely, they stay well, obviously, but they just don't look like you've got lipstick all over your face. So I would just put the product down and blend it out pretty quickly. Like don't put it all over your face because of course it's liquid lipstick, so it will dry down eventually. And you're gonna wanna blend it out before that happens, obviously. So see, that really did the trick and it's like the right tone to make like a spooky shadow. I'm gonna put it under my nose and under my lip, under my chin. See, just bits at a time so that I make sure that I am uh, not getting just like lines of lipstick on my face. Ooh, I'm also gonna gonna put a little bit in my temples just to sort of make my face look a bit thinner there we go or just I guess more angular rather than thinner all right now I'm gonna go in with blush and for blush as a vampire um, I like to think about like if you just 
bit somebody and you've got fresh human blood in your veins. So it's like a real red, like a real blood red. So I'm using Certainly Red by Revlon. Uh, these Revlon Super Lustrous lipsticks are really great texture wise and they work really well as blush. So I'm putting it on my hand like so. Going like this. And blending it out. Nice flush to the cheeks. And I know this looks like too much, it kind of is, but it blends out pretty. And so you'll blend that into your contour and up around so it looks like um, you want it to look natural like you're actually like flushing blushing, you know? Because this suggests blood. It suggests blood lust. All right, now, so sorry, now I'm gonna move on to my eyes. We still have some stuff to do to the face, but we're putting it on hold for now because we're moving on to eyes. So I'm gonna start with an eye primer. I've been using this eye primer from Morphe. Works fine. Um, doesn't work any better or worse than um, the eye primer I was using before. You know, just, you know, you gotta wear it. So I'm putting this up around. I already put like makeup and primer all around my eye. We're putting makeup all over this eye area. All right. I'm gonna use the Subculture palette today. A cheaper alternative would be, um, which I got mine at TJ Maxx, so it was not very expensive, but also this Meadow palette works really well. This is from um, Profusion. Um, it has similar colors to this um, Subculture palette. I just like the Subculture ones better. And I literally bought it specifically to do vampire makeup with. So I'm gonna take a huge, huge, huge fluffy brush. This is probably technically a highlight brush. An M, what are they, M501? I don't think I have one with me. That's like the shape that we're going for. You could also use something like this. This is M, this is M501. So yes, this would work, um, but also something like this. Um, e.l.f. has a concealer brush that does really well for this kind of stuff. I don't have it on me, but you guys get the drift. Big fluffy brush. This one just happens to be my favorite. It's from uh, Shop Miss A, I suppose. All right, I'm going to go in with this yellow color edge. And I believe you guys have seen me do this eyeshadow like quite a few times. But, you know, a little refresher. So what we're doing is we are accentuating... Um, I usually say the four corners of the eye, but what we're really doing is um, putting on eyeshadow in the shape of your ocular bone, which is great because it means it's easy because you're led by your bone structure. So we're really following this bone with this yellow, and we want it to be blended out just a little bit farther than that ocular bone. And um, basically what you're gonna wanna do is just darken where your eye is deeper. Oh, I dipped into a color that is not the color that we're using. That's okay, just blend it. <laughs> blend it over here. Whoops. We'll live. but you just wanna make sure that you're bringing a lot more darkness into this area than you normally would. Now I'm gonna do the same thing underneath with the same color. See how it's deep here? We're gonna deepen that really good. And then it comes up a lot closer to the eye over here. Deepen it, deepen it. And this one I kinda of like to pull, from right here I like to pull down into this crevice too, next to the nose. And there we have it, the first layer of uh, yellow. Now I'm gonna go in with a smaller fluffy brush and I'm gonna go into this shade All Star here. This is a red. All you need is a yellow and a red. Um, you could also use purple and blue, um, but yellow and red work better for my face. And basically you're gonna do the same thing. Just a little smaller for the depth.
see that? And then you follow that ocular bone. Under the eye, I'm not gonna pull this one all the way out to the edge because that's the money shot right there. This um, deepening of the under eye. Yeah, that looks good. All right, now I'm also gonna take just a teeny bit of this blue color axis and just go right here. That makes a sort of sickly purple. Yeah. Just blending it out and around. Taking that big brush again. No, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this brush that we used to put powder on earlier and I'm gonna blend my eyes out with that. Because you want a little bit of powder over it because it's gonna make it look more like um, bruising under this, look at that. That's sick, nasty, disgusting. Looks like bruising underneath the skin rather than um, makeup on top of the skin. So now that I've got powder all over it, that looks a lot more real, right? Now what am I, what am I gonna do? Um, now we can go back to face because we're gonna do highlight on the face and on the eyes. So now I take the opportunity to spray my face down with setting spray. Back in, because we lost too much of that depth. But you do want it to be like blended in. Anyway, spraying, spraying. Lovely, healthy. I'm going to use this <coughs> wet and wild highlighter um, because it's my favorite. It's I'm so lit. It's a loose highlighter and it is so shimmery, um, which I love. This is like the only place that like Twilight vampires come in, but I kind of like to look like um, shimmery and sweaty and just pretty. So I'll put that on my cheekbones. Where you would normally put highlight, I like it on my nose. I like to have a shiny nose as a vampire. Top lip. Just wanna kinda glisten brow bone. Put it all over your whole brow bone so that it pops out more. Emphasize it. And then also, I'm gonna take a little bit, a lot, and I'm gonna do a really, really bright inner corner. This is a queen of the damned thing. Um, and it's like one of my very favorite things to ever happen to vampire, like vampire makeup. And a lot of vampires have this now after Queen of the Damned. That red with earlier, and I'm just going to poke some of that red back up under here where I covered it up with the highlighter. But I just want to make sure that that inner corner was bright. Freckles. So I have this freckle pen. You could also just use brown eyeliner either way. Um, and obviously my blemishes are not totally covered up. So I like to turn them into moles or beauty marks because vampires would have moles or beauty marks, right? So I've got a little blemish here. And this will just finish off my like perfect skin thing since I can't have perfect skin. And then I'm just gonna do a few freckles because I feel like I look unfinished without them. And we'll just assume that this person had freckles pre-becoming a vampire. Okay, so no matter what, I like to make sure that I wear at least a tiny little line of black eyeliner because having this defined eye is really important in looking like a vampire. So um, I'm just gonna do a long, hopefully thin, that's my goal, wing because I feel like that lifted look is very vampiric. I always make sure to uh, poke it in. 
um, because it makes you look scary. Um, and then you can also do like, you can also do like other stuff with this wing, you know, like I said, I did sixties and I did blue. I did this makeup, except I did blue on the lid and I did the graphic liner and then I did this wing and I looked like a spooky sixties vampire. Okay. I'm doing this. All right, and then I feel like this step is really important in looking like a scary vampire as well. And that is, um, I'm gonna take a different eyeliner. Where'd she go? Oh, right here. And I'm gonna do an inner corner wing. And that is like, that makes you look menacing. Boop. Not huge, just enough to make your eye look more like, look at the difference in this eye and this eye. This looks like a scary vampire lady. Also for eye makeup, I almost forgot this step, but it helps tremendously. I like to do red in the waterline. I use lip liner. I don't suggest it. Wet n Wild lip liners don't bother my eyes, but I have had other lip products bother my eyes. Just do some research first. Um, but I have been using this Wet n Wild gel lip liner in Plum Together for like so long underneath my eyes. Because when I'm wearing regular makeup too, it makes my, uh, the green in my eyes pop, which I love. So I'm putting this on the waterline. Doing what Jade the Libra would call the possessed method. Oh, look how much scarier that just made that eye. And this is just again, like makes your eyes look sort of bloodshot, tired, bloodlust, kind of sexy too. Um, and now I'm gonna take that same red from this palette called All Star and I'll just blend that out underneath. Oh yeah. Take some face powder quickly. Probably just that white powder, yeah. And I'm gonna redefine this sort of, um, I call it like a, the fat part of my eye, but right here. If you let that go away, you won't look as tired or as scary. So make sure that that part stays light. <sighs> All right, brows. Um, if you must, if you must have eyebrows, um, draw them up and out. Uh, if you can just cover up the outside of your eyebrows um, or just shave off the tails, I would draw them up and out. Um, I'm going to just draw on some very quick uh, eyebrows just to um, give a good example of the shape that I think you sh that I would steer towards. something like so, you know, high and extreme arch. Angry eyebrows. Two lashes, let's do lips. So this is my favorite lip combo to be a vampire. Um, it involves two shades. Now, one is a shade very close to my natural lip shade and another one is a blood red. You can either use, this is by Revolution Beauty. Like I said, they just came to Walmart, I got excited. This is the Bitten Lip Stain. Um, you could use any red lip stain. I like this stain because it looks bloodier, um, but you could also, and I have used just a plain bright red lipstick. But now I'm gonna show you how I do it. So I'm just gonna draw my lips on with this because the reason I do this is just because I feel like it's important to the vampire look to make sure that my lips are defined and look like pretty and lush because vampires are hot and sexy and desirable. So I put this on 
and you know overline and make my lips look pretty Ooh. and then uh for the middle i will do the lip stain like a popsicle see now we're really looking vampiric all right um i'm gonna do mascara and lashes um maybe i'm gonna do the rest of everything um i'm gonna put on lashes and mascara a lash i would suggest a half lash on the outer um i love long i love dramatic but something that gets longer on the outside because this lifted, that's what we're going for. Vampires have very lifted features generally on media. That's what's recognizable to vampires. All right, yeah, BRB. Welcome back. Uh, this is everything um, in its uh, glory. Did I grab? No, I didn't. One moment. So, uh, as you can see, I've got no teeth. I've got no, um, well, I've got teeth. I've got no fangs. I've got no contacts. And I still look pretty believably vampiric. There's something off about me. And that's uh, my favorite way for vampires to be described is when they are like, well, she was very beautiful. There was just something off about her that I can't figure out. I can't describe. Um, what I have done and what I suggest to you uh, for a vampire-ish look is, you know, hair and outfit, generally, if it looks dated, it helps. Um, hair, I would do either really, really messy, like I have mine. I did a quick Gibson girl bun, um, which is just, I put it up in a loose, messy bun, and then I left out one piece of hair and I curled it, and then I curled my little tendrils pretty tightly. Um, I would go really messy like you're running through the woods after a damsel in distress, or I would do really sleek. Um, if you have short hair, slicking it back is very vampiric. If you have long hair, doing a long, straight middle part is also very vampiric. Um, so uh, also anything you have that's opulent is gonna generally look vampiric. Necklaces that have big stones um, that look like they could have a story behind them or could be a family heirloom. This actually is a this was a, this actually is a family heirloom vine. This was my great grandmother's, and I've got this fur, and it's making me look uh, quite vampiric. Um, I also am going to show you uh, a finishing touch, but first I'm going to take off my great grandma's necklace. Um, If you have fake blood, good on ya. If you don't, you don't have to. Um, I actually hate the texture and the smell of like fake blood you can get from the store. Um, if it needs to be filmed like moving, I make my own fake blood out of uh, food products. If it's just for my face, I will use either makeup or red food coloring. Now this will stain you. Speaking of it being a stain, this gives this same look. You could use uh, red liquid food coloring for this uh, lip stain as well. So what I'm gonna do is show you a couple of ways that I finish off this look with red food coloring to mimic a blood-like look. Um, I'm gonna take a brush, a makeup brush of some kind that you don't mind getting stained. Uh, it will wash out, it'll work again, but I'm gonna dip it in here and then I just like to get it like all full and then I will just press and that will give us that classic corner of the mouth. If you press, it'll drip. And now since it's food coloring, it's mouth safe, gets on your teeth, you look scary. And then if you want it to go faster, you can press it again and make the, make it longer. I don't know if I'm making any sense now, but see, that's the same 
That's the same thing. You don't have to buy that lip stain. And this, it's, I kind of want that drip to be even like nastier and longer. So let's, there we go. And then it spreads out and dries in a way that um, is kind of realistic to blood, which is cool. Um, now also I'm gonna take that same brush and I'm gonna flick it. So we get some spray, like you did a bite. And it's a little violent. Can dip it some more. Like I said, very messy, will stain your face, will stain your hands. But if you're being a vampire for Halloween, having red all over your hands is not super, like you're allowed. There we go. There's some better spatter. And since it's food coloring and not fake blood, this will dry and then wear all night instead of having sticky, wet, fake blood on you all night. And now I have this on my hands. It's very um, part of the look. Now, let's see, do I have any more suggestions? I don't believe so. This is my baseline vampire makeup um, and costume suggestions. Um, this I feel like you could do at the base of any vampire that you wanted to be from movies, from TV, just one that you made up. If you did like a like a disco vampire or a, a nurse vampire or something. Oh, final step, if you have them, which like I said, I feel like I look pretty good without them. Um, but these are my favorite teeth right now. Any vampire fangs will work, but these are my favorites. Right now, these because these are so feral. I've had these forever. I think these might have come with an it, like a Pennywise costume, but obviously it finishes the look to have bangs, but you don't have to. Here we are. Anyway. Ah. Ah. Mm. Oh, I just cut my gum. Owie. Now I'm gonna have a canker sore there and here. No. Anyway, thank you all so, so much for watching. If you like this video, please make sure to like it down below. And if you like me, please make sure to subscribe. I put out new videos on uh, most Mondays and um, I love making content. I love making spooky content. I will be making spooky content year round. If you recreate this makeup or if you're a vampire at all on Halloween, I would love to see. Uh, you can post a photo and tag me on Instagram. My Instagram is lastlooks underscore. Um, I would love to revel in our uh, vampiric joy. All right, I think that's it for now. I'll see y'all next Monday. Bye. Bye.